Today, the nation pauses to remember the Columbia Seven. Miss family and friends say goodbye to the lost souls. The investigation into what went wrong goes on. And with new revelations and new evidence, the question remains, where does America's space program go from here? Central Mountain or Pacific Times, a good morning to you. Just about an hour from now, the world will be watching as family and friends and admirers, along with President and Mrs. Bush, come together for a special memorial service to remember the Columbia 7. But through it all, the hunt for shuttle debris goes on. And in fact, there has been an important discovery. Right now, crews are excavating the Columbia's nose cone from a five-foot crater in the ground. Searchers did locate this cone very late Monday in a wooded area in East Texas. They say, quote, it is reasonably intact. Now, in total so far, people have found some 12,000 pieces of debris strewn across hundreds of miles of West Texas and Western Louisiana. That gives you some idea of the magnitude of this search. The FBI checking reports that debris may have fallen as far west as Arizona because it broke up so high in the atmosphere. And now the L.A. Times is citing a 1997 report by a NASA inspector, 1997, which highlights the potential impact of insulation debris on the shuttle's heat-resistant tiles. And that's precisely the kind of event which now, six years later, investigators say is the most likely root cause of the Columbia crash. Well, the recovery and investigation, of course, move forward. Nothing stops that. But today is a time to pause and remember the lives of the seven men and women aboard the Columbia. NBC's David Gregory is at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, where the memorial service is scheduled to begin, as I say, in less than an hour. And President Bush will be in attendance. David? Well, good afternoon, Forrest. Three days after disaster in the sky, the president is returning to his home state to lead the nation in saying goodbye to the seven astronauts on board the Columbia. Astronauts, the president says, will be remembered as fallen heroes. The entrance to the Johnson Space Center is a visible reminder of NASA's loss. The makeshift memorial grows with each passing day. At the site of today's memorial, they prepared for a crowd of at least 12,000. The president, who met with NASA Administrator Sean O'Keefe at the White House for an update on the investigation, praised the Columbia crew. The seven brave men and women from the Columbia will be remembered for their achievements, their heroism, and their sense of wonder. Just wanted to come down and say thanks. Here at the Space Center, another Bush, the president's father, toured mission control and tried to buck up a wounded NASA family. He spoke to his son Monday morning. I'm not trying to be a name dropper, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, he has great confidence in NASA, as well he should. Despite questions about the future of NASA's manned space program, the administration proposed a $700 million budget increase for the shuttle program alone. And the president says the mission must continue. While we grieve the loss of these astronauts, the cause in which they died will continue. America's journey into space will go on. And so the president is prepared to arrive at the Johnson Space Center here in Houston, his motor gate being prepared uh, to, to go uh, at the airport, awaiting the arrival of Air Force One. The president will come to the same site where Ronald Reagan memorialized the crew of the Challenger 17 years ago. The president expected to echo the sentiments uh, that he offered yesterday, that the space program must continue, and he will recommit himself to that. There is no news briefing today. Uh, on the investigation, NASA, NASA pausing today to say goodbye, and after today's memorial for us, the president will attend a private meeting with relatives of the Columbia crew. David Gregory in Houston, Texas, before the memorial begins. Thanks very much, David. And as David points out, this is an important moment in the history of the space program and the nation, and the memorial is scheduled to begin in less than an hour. As he points out, the investigation, the recovery search goes on, searchers combing that massive debris field created by the Columbia disaster, sifting now through thousands of pieces of what could be potential clues. NBC's Chip Reed is in Hempel, Texas. And Chip, I gather that uh, now that we are in this day, uh, some discoveries are beginning to make sense to them. 
Well, that's right. Here in Hemphill, they have found hundreds or even thousands of pieces of the space shuttle. Uh, top priority right now really is finding human remains. Uh, and they have found at several different locations in and around Hemphill human rem remains, and they're going to be bringing in dog teams later today to help them with that uh, very grisly job, uh, but that really is the top priority. They have also, as I said, found quite a few pieces of the space shuttle itself, and that nose cone we've been talking about, let me give you an idea where that was. Across this creek and about 75 to 100 yards through that East Texas thicket over there, they took the media, a small group of media over there a little while ago, and you can imagine what a, uh, an adventure that was, getting the media with their cameras and everything else through that uh, brush and through the thicket. Uh, I'll tell you, though, Forrest, uh, it is not quite what it had been described early on by some local witnesses who found it. It is only the very tip of the nose cone, as far as I can tell. There's no evidence that it contains any parts uh, of the uh, cabin itself or any uh, parts of what the astronauts would use to control the spaceship as uh, initially was reported, you could fit that entire part of the nose cone back there in the bed of a pickup truck. It's uh, a good deal smaller uh, than when we had initially been led to believe. Uh, but it is still a very significant find. Any large piece could help them determine, uh, at least in some small part, what happened here. Now, today, they're expected to have about 600 searchers out there. Plus, I'll tell you, there are a lot of local people out there doing it on their own, looking for pieces. Over here, this is the home of the man who actually, with the help of a couple of neighbors, found that nose cone back there. He has found dozens of pieces himself. Now, officials have discouraged local people from getting involved in the search themselves, uh, but the fact is those uh, people have really found quite a bit of, uh, of, uh, of the shuttle. In fact, without them, they probably would not have found the nose cone because, in fact, the official searchers had already searched this area. He went in there later on with his friends, and they found it. I think the people who really know this area sometimes are the ones who uh, know how to get into areas that other people just can't reach. Forrest? Uh, Chip, you've been following this from the beginning, and you remember the kind of confusion that there obviously was at, at the beginning and, and trying to get the agencies to work together. It sounds like it's, it's as difficult as it is running more smoothly now. It is running quite smoothly, I think. Uh, they have about 100 volunteers and 500 official searchers out there today. Uh, they said that they had some people out there even before dawn today. Uh, they said that they actually found some human remains out there. How they would do that in the dark is hard to imagine, but that's what they claim. But yeah, I do think things are going pretty smoothly. It's uh, a matter of routine. They get out there and they just cover as much area as they can each day. But the difficulty is we just found out walking through there. It's almost unimaginable. In fact, it is unimaginable. You could not possibly find everything in that kind of thicket. It would just be impossible. You would have to bulldoze the entire area to find everything, Forrest. East Texas Piney Woods, Chip Reed at the, the, the really the center of the searches in Hempel, Texas. Thanks so much, Chip.